my, oh my god, oh, merry, merry Christmas, oh my god, Christmas came, came early, Christmas came early, oh my god, sorry guys, I'm like two days late, but Black Clover leaks came out two days ago, and yesterday or this morning or whatever, TCB came out with the full translation, so welcome, I'm just gonna jump into it, jumping into the coverage, the review, the discussion, the thread, the whatever you want to call it, of chapter 369 of Black Clover, titled A United Front. Okay, so I haven't covered Black Clover ever in this channel. This is the first. Um, I actually caught up to the series during the break. So the last thing that happened in 368, if you need a little refresher, is basically all I'm going to say is Asta, uh, Yami's little sister is with Asta now. Um, they were like kind of like, Asta went to like that pseudo Japan, like little mini training arc. And... He gave all the Black Bulls uh, anti-magic. Okay, so that's that's what you gotta learn. Oh, and also they're fighting Lucius. Okay, so it starts off simple, right where the right where the last one ended. Asta and Yuno are pulling up on Lucius, and he's and they're saying, "Oh, it's two on two because Lucius cloned himself into two. And then Lucius says, "Nah." He <laughs> turns those again. Okay, double it and gave it to the next person, and now he's four. And then he's like, actually, by the way, I have, e there's 11 Luciuses and other angels just running around. So actually the odds are not in your favor at all. And then it cuts to all the black bulls in their sick ass redesign with all that anti-magic. Got gauche with the eyes, Magna looking scary, Luck looking happy, Vanessa looking like Vanessa, Charmy with the dark cloud. Like everybody, everybody just looks cool, great back there. Henry with the punk rock hair. And... Asta just casually says, oh yeah, Yami has a little sister. Everybody's freaking out. Everybody's like, what? You never told me, of course, Finral's over here horny. Charmy's trying to feed her. You, you know the usual. You know these guys. You know you know how the Black Bulls really are. Um, and then we get our first real, real like, exposition, like, real lore um, in the chapter where Captain Yami's little sister basically explains to us how Asta is sharing this anti-magic. So basically what she says, what she says is, word for word, his anti-magic power is intertwining itself with the nature of everyone's magic, allowing you to use pseudo-anti-magic. Okay, okay, so what that means to me, and this is just a personal theory, their anti-magic that the Black Bulls have is only strong enough to basically let them inflict damage on the angels or the paladins, whatever you want to call them. Um, but Asta's anti-magic is still like the strongest. It's still like the true anti-magic. Basically, Asta's just coding them or enchanting them with anti-magic but it's not to his level it's not like they're replacing asta and she later goes on under here and basically explains that they're only allowed like they're only able to at this time use like one or two like big anti-magic attacks so clearly there's a lot of limitations here that we don't know i'm sure asta doesn't really understand it he does like a little pun where he says Oh, this technique makes us all nakama, which I'm 90% sure that the official translation is going to be completely changed. But basically, the pun is um, nakama means comrades, but the ma at the end is the kanji for magic and devil. And he says, okay, we're nakama, so you get it. And everybody looks at him like he's an idiot, <laughs> whatever. Then immediately, immediately, like we're like not even waiting, not even like a little bit of exposition there. Like just that's all we get. Boom, straight to luck using ultimate black, okay, <clears throat> ultimate black lightning magic, black lightning battle fiend. And he does this crazy, dude, it's taking everything in my power to not make this panel the thumbnail, but no, okay, no spoilers, no spoilers in the thumbnail. But look at luck just dashing through the snow. Sorry, I'm in the winter spirit right now but he's dashing through the city like it's no one's business using black magic black lighting battle fiend looking absolutely demonic oh my god and then he just slashes through one of like the little angel doll things and he he says i could use up my anti-magic on this fodder but what i really want to do is beat up a lucius clone so he falls down after defeating that angel statue and Lucia says, this might be a problem. Manages to narrowly dodge Magna coming in, throwing a black ball of fire with anti-magic. And Lucia dodges a little bit, but then Magna, dude, Magna is in the battle. Oh my God, I'm so happy to see my guy Magna. Dude, Magna's become one of my favorite characters ever since his battle with the chain. And oh my God, dude. 
I've I've already read this chapter like twice, and I saw the leaks, but dude, it still fills me with hype. So now we got Magna and Luck fighting Lucius, okay? A clone. So remember, this is one out of 11. But still, this is like one of the biggest threats, for sure the biggest threat that Magna and Luck have ever faced, okay? This is the Wizard King with a devil. I don't care if it's a clone. This is like one of the most... I don't even know. Like, I, I don't want to power scale right now. I don't want to turn this video into that. But this has to at least, at very minimum, be above Captain level. I don't think anybody could disagree with me here. This has to be. Although, you know, the anti-magic, you can call it cheese. You can call it what you want. No, these are the goats, okay? Black Clover does side characters so right. So what does Magna do with luck? He throws his secret Black Flame magic soul chain tag death match that he used against... His first fight against Dante, which is my favorite fight in the entire series, when Magna got that huge W, he uses the chain again. And I really thought that that was the last time we were going to see it in the series. I, I don't know why I misread it. I thought he said that he could only use it once, that he studied so much to do it once. And honestly, I was like, dude, he defeated a big, big villain. I'm glad if he's going to use it once, I'm glad it went out like that. But no, he's going to do it again. And this time, he chained himself to Luck and the Lucius clone. And he says, and the angel. So it's a four-way. And he says, all of our magic power is split in three. And then they just get to throwing hands. They said, dude, they immediately sent that angel dog packing. Okay? Their words, not mine. Looking absolutely insane. Magna punching. Luck kicking. And then now they're just being divided into three equally. What a great ability. The best ability, in my opinion. The most creative ability. The coolest ability in the series for me. I love this ability. And then Magna's ready to go. He says, all right, we got rid of the doll. But now it's time to get to beat the crap out of the main boss. They jump in, still chained. They're fighting. They're exchanging blows. Lug's going in. They're getting hit. They're taking hits. You know, very standard fighting here. Uh, exchange of blows. Looks like Magna tries to throw a black exploding um, fireball. Does significant amount of damage. Lucius is bleeding. His robe is caught on fire. And then he says his regeneration cannot keep up because of the anti-magic. So the, the Asta buff coming in clutch. And then they're just gradually chipping away. So like imagine this Lucius clone being, a, being like a raid boss in an RPG. Like a super boss. And they're just slowly just chipping damage. Chipping damage. Chipping damage. You know, his HP bar is probably like at 80, maybe maybe even 90 right now. Like, they're not doing a lot of damage, but, they're, but they are actually hurting him. And But he says that he, although he can't regenerate, he, their anti-magic is not going to last forever. So he's just going to endure it. He's just going to stand there and be like, I'll take the hits, wait, wait it out, wait for their anti-magic to go away. Which is crazy because that means that he can't do anything to actually touch them, which is already a crazy feat on its own. And then they say that they have about half of their anti-magic power remaining. And then they have this cool little line where Magna saying, when I'm with this guy, holding out until the end, going slow and steady like that, just ain't my style. And then Lux says the same thing, but he says, isn't for me. Basically saying, when I'm with my boy, when I'm with my go, when I'm with my duo, when I'm with my twin, we're not going slow. We're going crazy. Then they said half and half together is our full power. And then they hit my boy Lucius with the same attack that they hit Vettel with way back in like chapter 3. It's like in the 60s or 180 like something. But you know what I mean. The black flame, black lightning, exploding cannon looking absolutely amazing. Mind you, these are side characters getting main character level feats right now. They hit the Lucius clone. When I'm reading this, I'm like, okay, that's going to do significant damage, right? But surely they're not going to take him out. No way. Next panel. Lucius is just a head. He is just a head. He should have stopped while he was a head. Okay, okay, okay. And then Asta, seemingly watching all of this, turns around to like Lucius clone 7 and 6 and says, Tell me now, are the odds still in your favor? Sick ass line. He said, Trust in my crew. And then, uh, Luck and Magna fist bump. Victory belongs to Luck and Magna. This signals the start of their counter attack. Okay, so that means that there's at least 10 Lucius left. Save the paladins and save all the other enemies. At least 10 Lucius clones left. 
how many black bulls are left? Let me see. Okay, so Asta counts, right? Obviously, we're gonna give Yuno one. So that's already that's already one, two. I'm scrolling over here. I, I'm a fake fan. I need to look at all these black bulls. So, assuming assuming that everything else is a one v one, which is not, because like obviously, like Finn Roll's not gonna one v one. We have one, two, one, two, counting Aston. You know, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, so we have 11 people counting us on, you know, fighting 10. So obviously, Finro. I really, I think it would be really cool if we get a Finro and Vanessa without Asta, right? They were like the people that supported him. But maybe if we used like Finro and Vanessa side fighting side by side, I don't know, because they don't really have a lot of offensive ability. So I can't really see how, how these matchups are going to go. Maybe like Gray and Gordon will team up, obviously, because they're like, they're like classic, you know. And and also, you know, don't have to just take one out; they can take multiple out, you know, and just have like more team ups. Like Zora and Nero just look like cool. Like their abilities could maybe do something interesting. Honestly, Charmy can solo. Henry can solo. Um, Ghosh, I honestly think he can solo. Like the only people that I'm really worried about is like Gordon, Gray. Zora, Nero, and Vanessa just because maybe they're in the weaker side or they're just like more support oriented. Like what does a Nero 1v1 look like? What does a Finro 1v1 look like? So a lot of exciting things. Um, I saw someone else point this out on Twitter and just more people just having a discussion here. The, the, um, the manga does not come back to like the beginning of April, which sucks. Um, however... It is really interesting because some people thought that, oh, this anime, this manga has like three chapters, four chapters to go. Because now it's in the Jump Giga magazine. Um, but I don't necessarily think that's the case. I mean, think about this. We got a whole chapter just dedicated to Luck and Magna. And this is like a 26, 27 ch uh, page chapter, which is like only five more pages than a standard weekly shonen. So two things can happen here. Either one, the pacing just gets dramatically faster, which I don't think that's going to happen. Or two, the chapters get longer. So like the next giga, giga chapter is going to be 50 pages. Like, I don't know, maybe this chapter was made before the switch happened and this was supposed to be a weekly shonen chapter with just some added scenes here or there. And now the next ones from here on out are going to be 50 pages. That being said, though, the pacing is not any different. This is a weekly level pacing for me. Just a fight. Maybe the fight could have been broken up into two chapters if it was weekly, but we just got a sped up one. But that's just one fight. Assuming that every other fight is not going to be as long as this one, that's still 10 fights that we at least need to see a little bit of. Plus the ending, plus how this just turns out, you know. So... I don't think it's going to end anytime soon. I'm here for the long ride, man. I, I hope that um, the manga continues because, honestly, it is my favorite new gen. I absolutely adore Black Clover. Um, but, yeah, I just wanted to come on here and talk about the chapter. I think it's absolutely amazing. I think what we're doing is great. And I can't wait for see what my man Tabata cooks in April. Um, more Black Clover videos to come in the future. I, I, ugh, dude, peak is back. Peak is back, and I'll see you guys later in a few days. Bye.